You have to understand that to solve a problem, the solution must align with human nature. Like, we, we are doing everything against human nature these days, and we've even made it popular. We call it politically correct. Mm. Yeah, which is the same way as saying lying is good. <laughs> okay. Like, you know, and, and I'm radically honest to the point that, like, it's, it's probably wrong. Like, if my wife comes in and says, do you think this dress makes me look fat? I might be the guy that says, don't blame it on the dress. Now, my wife is not fat. My <laughs> wife is a beautiful woman. So fair disclosure. But I, yeah. I believe in radical honesty. Because if you tell someone the truth and they get triggered, it's not you that's triggering them. It's the truth that's triggering them. But the only thing that sets people free is truth. So when somebody gets truth and then they get out of the pain they're in because they had the fucking stones to step up and fake that they're not scared of that truth and face the fucking truth, then they get through it, man. I mean, and then all of a sudden they have a breakthrough. Why do they call it a breakthrough? Something fucking breaks. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think that I think that mindset is slowly making a resurgence now of realizing like you can't lie to yourself. If if I'm not the weight I'm at, the fitness I want, that's my fault. If I'm not making the money I want, I'm doing something wrong. I want to know, you know, with that that straight shooter attitude, I'm I would wager that's been an, an asset to you in business when you can just say things as they are or not be afraid to tiptoe around, whereas somebody might not make that that phone call that needs to be made. How do you think that attitude has, has helped you in business over the years? Uh, I mean, it's a mixed bag. It's, it's, it's a mixed bag. Um, but what I've found is it's definitely helped. We've grown like a weed. Um, but you're also going to have some days where somebody's not going to buy from you. Okay. Like I have a sign that sits outside of my model homes at my home building company. And it says, we reserve the right to refuse service to assholes. This is our level of radical honesty. Like if you're that customer that thinks everything must be perfect and everyone is got to be held to the same standards of Jesus Christ himself, then, then you're probably an idiot. And there's no way I can help you. There's frankly no way anyone can help you. So I'd rather not even try. I'd rather stop there. Well, I remember when I first put that sign out and my competitor said, oh my God, you're a fool. That's going to drive away so many customers. And it actually did. It drove away the assholes. People would walk in, they'd be like, that's offensive. And we'd be like, hey, you know what? Then this is not a home for you because we're very authentic. And then other people would walk in, they'd be like, that's fucking hilarious, dude. How do you do that? And they're like, look, we're building a new home. We build a beautiful home. We do all this. Our goal is to always make it perfect. But homes are made by human hands and humans are human. We're going to fuck up at some point. We want to make sure we don't have the customer that's going to call and cuss out the secretary that is probably not even the person that messed up. And what we found, sir, is we think that sign's a great thing. You know why? Your neighbors are all going to be amazing fucking people. They're going to be people that we have a good relationship with. We're there to show up if there ever is a problem. They treat us right. We treat them right. And you know what's crazy? You drive down the streets where we build fucking houses and the barbecues are packed and people know their neighbors hmm. because we don't have assholes. And so here's this sign where at first, in the beginning, half of the customers would see the sign and not show up. They, 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 they'd stop at the sign. But you know what happened like six months later? Hmm. All of my customers stuck. So everybody else got all these customers and some of them weren't even real because they were assholes because they were like, it weren't, weren't even worth dealing with. Like you ever get in, I mean, you're 22 years old. I'm sure you've dated some folks. You ever get like one of those narcissistic, crazy ladies? You know? I, yeah, I know, what you, I know what you mean. Okay. Like, and, and, and you dated her, right? And you're like, Oh shit, I gotta get out of this. Like it's more exciting to get out of that relationship than it was to get in. I don't care how she looked. Right. Yeah. And the so filtration we, process, it seems. And so, and that's what authenticity is, bro. Like authenticity is filtration. Like I trigger lots of people, but do you know who it is that it turns out I really trigger? And this mm. is what's really interesting. Losers. I trigger losers and I don't call them losers because I don't like them. I call them losers because all the people that seem to hate me have this trend of continuing to lose. And if we measure trends and that's how we get successful, one trend that I've seen is people that get triggered all the fucking time tend to not notice the opportunities presented to them all the fucking time, tend to fail more at life. I know we're not allowed to call losers losers. That would be authentic and politically incorrect, right? But they're fucking losing frequently.
because they're missing opportunities. And anytime you're missing an opportunity, so yes, I trigger lots of losers. And it's turned out to be a wonderful filtration device. And I don't have to worry about their feelings. Because mm -hmm. honestly, like, you know, if you want me to care about your feelings, well, why? Like, I, I, I care about you, so I'm going to tell you the truth. But if I got to be so fucking sensitive that I got to care about your feelings, I mean, dude, like, I don't even do that for my kids. Like, I, you know, I, I care enough about my kids that, like, I'll, I'll sit down and maybe explain stuff more than I will to somebody on a 60-second social media video. I disagree with everything about you. It's a 60-second social media video, stupid. Really? You disagree with everything about me and you heard 60 seconds? If you're really that judgmental and that you have that much blame in your heart, remember blame is an acronym, being lazy and making excuses. But I mean, like, think about how triggered people get. Like when you're triggered, you have an inability to see another person's opinion. Your emotional quotient intelligence drops to zero. It's the same thing as being prejudiced. It's substantially similar to racism. Like if somebody's like, I'm white, they're black, therefore they're bad. That would be a racist person. I would also say the presupposition based on this conversation is that's a stupid fucking person. If you think somebody's wrong because their skin has more melanin, because their ancestors had more sun, you're an idiot. Well, if you think someone's wrong because they have a different opinion than you, then you're saying, I don't agree with freedom of thought. Everybody should be exactly the same. How would that fucking work? That would be a mm -hmm. shitty world. If you get triggered, then you're an idiot. You're probably losing a lot in life, far more than you should be. You should work to never get triggered. Why would you pick those emotions? Yeah, and there's there's so many factors that go into it. I think one is just human beings on average tend to <laughs> want to reach some consensus among other people in person. But when your audience is not just the hundred people in your local tribal community, but millions and millions of people. You can say good morning and somebody's going to get offended. Yeah. You know, it's, oh, it's not good for me. You know, so the, the, the wider you cast that net, the, the, the more likely you're just going to hit somebody's tripwire. So I think, and, I mean, yeah, you're right. At some point you set the filter. And that's for your question, the blessing and the curse of authenticity. The blessing and the curse of telling and the curse of telling the truth is you're gonna alienate some. And 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 you know, I've watched like Gary Vee and I've watched uh, Grant Cardone and some of the other guys talking about haters. Golly, man, I love these haters. I love triggering weak people because they blow up your algorithm. Their shit talk gets you to far more authentic people. And then when authentic mm -hmm. people hear the truth, like, dude, when people are not like emotionally closed off, when they are conscious thinkers, those are the ones you want. Like, regardless of what business you're in, those are the ones you want because those are the ones that are fun to work with. They're the ones that if you have a problem, they're going to work through it with you. They're the ones that are going to give you feedback. They're, they're awesome. And so how's it been? Overall, phenomenal. Upfront. It's, it's scary. You got to face it till you make it. Once you've been in it for a while, you'll notice that you have 10 times the efficiency. You'll notice that the culture of your organization is really good because your people aren't getting screamed at by losers all the fucking time that don't know how to manage their emotions. I mean, some of the ways that I've seen some customers at other organizations that I've worked with, because I, I used to do uh, real estate consulting for builders before I bought a home building company. And I would hear some of the calls that like people would call and yell at the girl in the warranty department. And I'm like, what if a teacher talked to your children like that? Like, I, I, I mean, I might strangle a teacher for having conversations like that with my child. Like these people can be downright abusive. Why would you let that person in your front door? Do they deserve your product? And so you got to love the haters, but you got to also like, give them a little Heisman. There's got to be some distance that part of part of the triggering is they can't get in anymore. And then they start knowing that some of them actually convert to fans. And that's actually really fun. Like I've had some haters convert to fans. I've, I've got a friend of mine. He actually bought a house for me. He lives down the street from me. And he was like, dude, I used to be your hater, man. Like you pissed me off and triggered me and this, that, and the other. And you know, you know what had happened is I'd said, I said, I had said some shit to support some ideas of the Democrat party and he was very conservative. And, uh, 
And I, I and I guess he was my hater for that. And now, now of course, I'm saying a lot of common sense things that support the conservative party. And I've got a lot of people on the left saying, oh, you're the devil. And I'm like, guys, uh, poly means multiple. Ticks means blood sucking arachnids. Politics, root word, all bad. Like, may, 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 maybe we should all be looking for some bipartisan compromise. Like, the conservatives aren't dumb. Spending money within your means is not stupid. The progressives are not dumb. Uh, you know, like wanting progress, not stupid. We need both. But you know what? Like when you get the extremism on either side, that's stupid. Like it's it's stupid to think we should be having gender conversations with six-year-olds. They're not even thinking about gender. They don't even know what sex is. That's fucking dumb. Like having anyone that thinks that's not dumb. Well, if you think that's not dumb, you're dumb. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with you because it's a waste of fucking time. Like I have a six-year-old. I have a four-year-old. You know what they don't know? They don't know what dicks do and they don't know what vaginas do. There's no purpose in them learning about their fucking genders. Now, if, if, if you want to say, hey, you know, maybe 18 year olds shouldn't buy, you know, assault rifles. Like, I think that's a real fucking conversation. Like, that's fine. Like, it's not dumb to have a conversation about that. Have conversations. But like when you bring these things up, it's really fun because you'll find that you start triggering people that have a different opinion because you have a different opinion. It's like, whoa, guys. We're supposed to have different opinions. That's how we, like, you know, iron sharpens iron. It's like a biblical principle. I know we can't say biblical anymore. It's a biblical principle. Iron sharpens iron. Like, we all talk about it. Maybe we'll get a better fucking result when we all share each other's reasons for our opinions and our underwriting for how we got there. And then if you have a different opinion and we do that, we might come to a rational solution together. But at the same time, if you can't defend your opinion, is it really worth having? If you have to go straight to a character assault to somebody that has a different opinion, then I would put the presupposition out there. You can't defend your opinion. Your opinion is not valid. If you can't defend what you love, and you definitely love it if you're willing to get emotional about it, mm -hmm. then you don't fucking deserve it. Yeah, an interesting question that I've always tried to ask is, why do I believe what I believe? And why, why is this thought in my head? And do I still carry this to this day? People... Many times nowadays, will have politics as part of their identity because maybe they have nothing else to do. But I've, I've always looked at it as like, what can you control and, and focus on that? 